So Dr. Baker and Dr. Reyes, you've just given a more expansive definition of what violence is. So now thinking about this more expansive definition, how do you even put joy and violence in the same conversation? What is the relationship to joy and violence? So thank you for that question. And we want to be adamant, we are adamant, that um, God doesn't want suffering for any of God's children. And we struggle because sometimes the flip side to a theology of joy is a theology that sometimes wants to rationalize or make suffering okay. Right. And we're not okay with that. And so we're talking in our work around the implicit curriculum <laughs> that comes with some of the sayings that we hear over and over again in our churches that, that, we, that we teach and that young people learn. Things like, um, oh, there's a purpose in everything, mm -hmm. or God doesn't give you more than you can handle. Mm -hmm. And we're rejecting that and saying mm -hmm. God doesn't want violence or suffering mm -hmm. for any of God's children. And so we're careful to say that, yes, on the other side of suffering, there's a capacity for joy. Sometimes there's even a deepened capacity for joy mm -hmm. out of the kind of guttural experiences that we've gone through, mm -hmm. the lament. Um, but we never want to say that one justifies the other. Um, so another signature, I think, um, uh, import of a definition of joy is is the ability to have agency, mm -hmm. the ability to have not just the, the determination to stay alive in the midst of violence, which is an important starting point and very mm -hmm. important to Patrick's work. Sometimes just staying alive, the decision to stay That's alive right. is, is, is a decision toward joy. But then we want to be able to hold out the possibility that young people, even after severe violence, can find meaning, can find purpose, can find agency, not just to tell their stories and name their experiences, but to become part of changing the culture themselves, to become part of naming the structures that inhibited their joy mm -hmm. so as to dismantle them and to create alternative structures. That's yeah. really the curriculum that we're hoping to, to be to be talking about and building here. Mm. Yeah, and I think to put a, um, a story behind that and the conditions around that, I, I go back to like my own story around violence. You know, I didn't enter into this conversation around violence through scholarly work. It's really through the embodiment of, of surviving um, both domestic um, abuse and uh, the conditions that were surrounding me. You know, the, where I come from in California is one of the highest gang per capita in the, in the country. So, um, and the, the story that I think really gets at that is, um, you know, I'm a young adolescent um, after my parents' divorce. My mom brings in an abusive man who nearly chokes the life out of me. And waking up the next morning, the first, um, you know, reflecting back on it, the joyful moment is that I had another breath, mm -hmm. that I hadn't perished the night before. Um, and um, so, I mean, just that first step of surviving, I think that's... Uh, key. The second is, I had the good fortune of going to a small Christian Brothers High School. Um, so these brothers coming out of an Irish tradition where they're con creating conditions for young men to thrive, um, mm -hmm. really a, in a place where they came out of an educational environment where young Catholic men in Ireland weren't allowed to be educated. So they have this long history of creating conditions for it. And I show up on campus the moment after this happens to me in my home, and I'm greeted with uh, warmth and told that you have the you have a space here. Be here as much as you want. Mm. Um, seeing all the all the markers of violence that I was carrying on my body in bruises and in my flesh, um, and I think that capacity building, that space, that is the church, that is very Christian. Um, it was coming from a theological place. That's why these brothers were doing it. They built the capacity for someone like me who interrupted their kind of daily life with the markers of violence covering my body, and them mm. saying, "You have a place here." Um, that to me is creating the capacity for joy to happen. Um, so it's not just about like what is joy as if joy is a, a conditional thing that we can uh, clearly define. But for me, it was waking up and being able to breathe. Uh, it was knowing that I had a place to go and people who cared and loved about me, loved me. So yeah, I think that's where I'm at. Mm 